spin to win, as they say. Now, if you're not familiar with the term, it's spin your legs as fast as possible, and you'll be in good form. Now, high cadence has long been associated with ability on the bike. But is it as important as they say? Yeah, so we're going to give you this video to show you if spinning works or if it doesn't. Oh. Well, it's not easy. how are you feeling? <laughs> Let's get to the video. First up, the sciencey bit. Force in a circle is called torque, and velocity in a circle is called cadence. How to go faster on the bike? Increase the force, increase the cadence, and increase both at the same time. But riding on different terrains is the cause for using different cadences. Steeper climbs, there is a bigger force on your muscular power and higher torque. Flatter, faster roads, and you'll be using more of your aerobic system when the speed is the name of the game and the cadence rises. But what do we mean by high cadence? Well, I think anything from 100 RPM and above, and a low cadence, anything from 85 RPM and below. RPM, revolutions per minute. This is how many times your crank rotates in a circle in one minute. Now, you're not just going to rely on one specific cadence to help you ride faster. You need to be versatile and be able to switch between a low and a high cadence. So getting used to riding at a higher cadence is going to help improve your riding. But here are a few other areas that might help too. Being able to ride a high cadence will allow you to accelerate quicker and adapt to those changes of pace a lot easier. But ride at a low cadence in this scenario, and it's going to be easier to push hard on the pedals at greater torque, but do this repeatedly over time, and you're going to fatigue quicker. Yeah, and it's going to be harder to adapt to those changes of acceleration in a bunch. And what we're saying here is if you can ride at a high cadence in a group, you'll be able to hold the wheel better, and you'll spend less time in the wind, and then, You'll be fresher for when it, when you need it most, basically. When there's a sprint like that. Look, see? Oh, She's got no change of cadence. I got this. Now, we've spoken about how on steep climbs that you rely more on strength at a lower cadence. This is true, but getting used to being in a nice, easy gear at the bottom of a climb will help you avoid a chain drop or the smashing of the gears as you try and find the right gear for your effort. Now, riding at a higher cadence will save you from fatigue, especially on those flat and rolling terrain. You can use your aerobic system instead of stressing those muscles. Now, it has to be said, your heart rate is going to be higher on those longer efforts when you're managing the different changes of cadences. And ultimately, you'll be fresher. Leg speed on the track is super important. I mean, it's what it's all about, being able to spin your legs really fast whilst riding in a fixed gear. And it is a skill that transfers over to the road too. I mean, look at the likes of Mark Cavendish and Elisa Balsamo. Spin your legs fast and you'll be able to access those super high speeds needed to sprint well. Instead of sprinting and changing gears as you do so, you'll also be able to increase your speeds for short accelerations without looking for that gear lever. So how do we increase our cadence? Now, one of the ways is to sit at a tempo effort and then find a cadence you're comfortable with. If you've got a bike computer, you can measure this or if you haven't, what you can do is you can count the number of uh, revolutions per minute your right leg makes. Now, once you've got that number, the next time you do that tempo effort, you want to increase that RPM by 10 or even 5 RPM. You should be setting around 100 or 105 RPM. Now, that will feel uncomfortable, but if you repeat this throughout your rides, you'll start to sit at higher canes, you'll find it more comfortable and you'll be more efficient and quicker with it too. You could also add in some really high cadence work. High cadence being around 110 to 120 revolutions per minute. Do this for 30 to 45 seconds. Add a few of them into your ride, maybe four or five into that ride, and you will see the benefits. Cadence is not something to underestimate. Train it and you will see the benefits. 
So there you have it. I guess the conclusion is Cadence does help you on the bike and could make you more efficient and faster. Yeah, it definitely does. But let us know what you think down in that comment section below. And whilst you're down there, you know the drill. Give us a big thumbs up oh. if you did enjoy.